Oh, okay. Yeah, so I started working as a journalist in high school, actually, working on the school paper. And uh, I was actually at first mostly interested in photography. And that, that was the first thing that I, I did. And I got really into, you know, black and white photography and doing my own developing and printing and all that. So I kind of was always interested in the technical side, I suppose, of journalism, too, and, and how to actually produce, you know, what, what was being done. And then from there, yeah, I worked at the the college newspaper at uh, Stanford and, and did eventually changed over to being a writer because I thought that was also interesting and I always loved writing. And after college, I got a job at the Associated Press where I worked for, for 12 years all around the world and in, uh, in Europe and Berlin was my first foreign posting and then Moscow, Central Asia, Korea after working for a few years in the U.S. to start off. Um, what about Storyfy? How did you start doing that? How was that born? So, yeah, I was fortunate after this career at the AP to be able to return back to Stanford and do the Knight Fellowship there, which is a program where they bring journalists from around the world, like a selected group of journalists, uh, to basically spend the year at Stanford and do whatever they want to. And there, I really looked at innovation and entrepreneurship and was thinking about how we can bring this to journalism because obviously with the web and, and technology and newspapers facing difficulties, you know, there's, there's a lot of disruption in the industry and I was wondering how we could, you know, find the other side and make sure that journalism still survives and people still know what's going on in their world. So, uh, so yeah, from that I really saw social media as a big part of it and how people were, you know, now able to interact with each other easily from all around the world and with smartphones and and things like Twitter, you know, that, that anybody can really easily post something and have it be seen by a huge audience. So I guess, you know, we, we were kind of thinking of ways like thinking about what the AP would be like if you were to create it today from scratch. So do you believe that citizen journalism and local and hyper-local journalism will actually have, will see a development in the future? Yeah, I mean, I guess, well, we... We don't really talk about citizen journalism necessarily. I, I differentiate journalism from just reporting what you see. Everybody can be a reporter, not everybody can be a journalist. I think to be a journalist, you need to you know, give context, look at you know, past events and what's happening now and why is this different and why is this important and fact check you know, what you see and look at it with a critical eye. I mean, I still think we need people to do that function. That could be regular people. I'm not saying you have to work for like a formal, you know, big news company to be doing that. But I just, I do think that journalism is more than just like snapping a photo and uploading it to Twitter. Uh, there are many people that are as curious as I am about what will the future of Storyfy be? I mean, will there be any improvements, changes in how it works and its structure? Sure. I mean, we, we are very early, I guess, still feel like we are very early. We, we have only been out publicly for, I guess now it's almost a year. But, uh, you know, there's so much more we would like to do. We're, we're a very small company. We still we only have six people total full time in the company. So, uh, so yes, I mean, the key thing we want to do uh, that we look to the future is turning the audience of stories into curators, too, and, and enable people who read stories to comment and take things that they like and kind of organize them in a, in a simpler way without having to go through the full process of doing a story. Okay, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, Hacks and Hackers. How is that idea born and uh, what is it actually? Okay, so that, that also came from, from being at Stanford and really you know, being in the heart of Silicon Valley and seeing these amazing technology companies like Google and Facebook and Twitter creating all this stuff and learning so much about how people interact online and just trying to connect those people to journalists and get them to care also about what's happening with journalism. I, I think, I mean, some of the news companies were criticizing these internet you know, companies and saying they're like stealing our work or something like that, which to me always seemed a little bit odd. I mean, I think, you know, media companies should find ways to work to, with technology companies in order to, you know, reach audiences and figure out what what the readers actually want. And also, I mean, I think more and more media companies are becoming technology companies, and technology companies are becoming media companies. They're kind of the same thing. 
because you know now when you publish, I mean, you write code that right. then creates a web page. So <laughs> you kind of have to have code or like and have people working together like from very early on to think about you know, how are you going to publish your stuff digitally using code. And what is currently your media diet? Okay. Uh, yeah. I. So. I'm still pretty like email focused. I get a lot of email newsletters every morning, like from the New York Times and then places like Paid Content and Media Bistro and the Pointer Institute. I mean, I tend to focus obviously a lot on things that are connected with media and technology. So I guess that's probably how I start my day is looking at that. I'm pretty old fashioned actually too. I still like RSS feeds which uh, I do subscribe to not like a crazy like hundreds, but just a few that I actually want to read. And I actually try to make sure I like at least skim the headlines of all these. And I do that either like on my iPad, like I like to use Pulse, the application that kind of makes RSS feeds look nice and visual, or I, I actually do it on my, on my laptop. I mean, I have uh, just an RSS reader. And then, I don't know, I, I also have this thing I use which... Uh, so I don't, I don't sit there watching Twitter all day. I do watch it for like Storify, simply for the company to see if people are talking about us or asking for help or, okay. or sending interesting stories that I want to see. So I, I don't actually use Twitter to get my news in that way, but I actually have this thing that emails me three times a day what like the latest things are that people I follow are saying on Facebook and Twitter. It's this other thing called nutshell mail, which then it kind of like forces me to look at Twitter three times a day just to quickly see like what's happening. And then I also really like these services that take the links that people share on Twitter and put them together and then send you once a day, like these were the top things people were talking about. And again, I, I think that kind of sense of curation is sort of important. I mean, that, that is the positive thing about, about journalism that we need going forward. You need somebody to say like, this is what's on the front page. This is what you need to know today in the world. And that's it, like not to have an infinite you know, stream of, of, of news and information just bombarding you and you can just never finish anything.